Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. My name is Bill Anderson. I'm here at the Woodwright School, uh, Roy Underhill's The Woodwright School in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Um, I'm here with Josh Farnsworth, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about carving tools that you can use to work on your traditional furniture with. Specifically, we're going to look at some carving gouges here and carving mallets. Uh, and I'll just talk to you a little bit about some basic information about these. First of all, this is a carver's mallet. You can see that it's round, not very big. Sometimes they're very much smaller than this. Sometimes they're made out of brass or something like that. But they're very easy for striking and changing the angle of the chisel as you work around. So quite useful in that respect. The other type of chisel, uh, uh, mallet that you see in the shop is a joiner's mallet, square-faced, slight angle here, really meant for chopping or heavy-duty work, a little bit cumbersome for doing the work of, of carving an intricate pattern on a piece of work. So typically, you don't use a, a mallet like this for carving. I've got arrayed here a, a series of, uh, of chisels, and these are all uh, out cannel chisels. You can see that the bevel is on the bottom side of each one, like that. In other words, outside the curve of the chisel. So those are out cannel. The other style of chisel is called in cannel, where the bevel is on the inside. Those particular type of chisels are used more, not so much for carving as for scribing, uh, uh, coping, and things like that in uh, frame and uh, panel and sash work. But these are tools that are a, a range of tools that are used for uh, your typical carving needs. And I've uh, arranged these in increasing levels of uh, sweep. So the sweep is the curvature of the chisel, right to left like that, the curvature. So chisels that have no sweep are typically number one. And then as you work your way up to number 11, chisels with a number 11 sweep have a U-shaped sweep. So they vary from one through 11 in a degree of sweep and in addition, how wide the chisel is. So you can find chisels that are narrow and wide. And it's indicated here on the um, side of the chisel in this, for this particular brand, they've indicated the sweep, which is number one, a slash, and then the uh, uh, width of the chisel, in this case, 14 millimeters. Uh, and usually the, the width is expressed in millimeters. So a little bit more than a half an inch wide. Um, and all of these, I've chosen all of these to be about the same width. This one is 16 millimeters. It's 16 millimeters from point to point, the actual functional width of the chisel rather than the width of the curve. And then uh, this one is a number seven sweep. Um, so uh, there actually are two systems of numbering. Uh, there's an English system and there's a European system. The English system includes not only a straight chisel, but before the first curved sweep, they have a skewed chisel. And that's the number two in the English system. And then the first sweep is a number three up to 11. In the European system, they don't have the skewed chisel in that, in that nomenclature. So the first sweep is a number two. So you can see that depending on who made your chisel, the numbering system, especially in the lower numbers, will be a little bit different. And you need to be aware of that. Typically, if you're going to do a carving project, the safest way is to get an impression stamped in a piece of wood at the end of your chisel from the person who's going to teach you or the book you're going to learn from or whatever, and take those impressions to the tool store and look for a chisel that matches that. And that way you'll be sure to get the sweep that you actually want, the sweep and the width that you actually want. And that's important. I have two other chisels here which are quite useful and a little bit different. This one's a bent gouge. See, it's still an out cannel gouge, but the shaft here is bent. And just this allows you to uh, get a little more steeper uh, start on a piece of work where you may have uh, some restriction in the back, but you can come in at a steeper angle 
and work that out. So they have chisels that are bent in this direction and in the other direction as well. Uh, those would be definitely be specialty chisels. If you're looking for a, a set of chisels initially, um, these straight chisels are the most common and most uh, uh, commonly used uh, straight chisels. The last one I want to show you is a V gouge, and you can see that this chisel here is in the shape of a V. And V gouges are used to block out the outer perimeter or internal design elements of a, of a, uh, a carving in order to get the general shape and, and depth that you want, and then you'll come back with uh, other chisels to um, carve in the curves. For example, if you're doing a shell or something like that, you might use a V gouge to outline the various lobes of the shell, but a straight or slightly curved chisel to uh, carve the actual curve of each lobe. So different chisels for different purposes. V gouge is quite common. You need something like that in a basic set, some small V gouge. This one is a uh, in this particular numbering system, V gouges are numbered 41. They don't really have a sweep per se, but they do have a width. So this is six millimeters wide. In other words, about a quarter of an inch wide, uh, but it's a number 41 chisel. And that's just a number that they have in their system. There's nothing specific about it. Uh, but other V gouges may be wider or narrower than this. This particular one has a 60 degree curve, 60 degree angle here. The, the V is 60 degrees. There are Vs that are 30 degrees and 45 degrees. So um, you need to be aware of the fact that if you get a V gouge, you probably want one that's steep like this. These are well suited for outlining a, a project. The other V gouges have more specialized purposes. So just need to be aware of the fact that there are different angles to the V gouges. And when you're using a, a, a carving tool, let me just do a little a little um, cut right here, just to give you an idea of, of um, how, how you would use a carving chisel. You can either do all your cutting by hand, which has a lot of advantages, and you see that I'm using my hands in opposition to each other. One hand, my, my dominant hand, is pushing the chisel through the work, but if I was just to carve like this, nothing would stop me from slipping and going, making the cut go too far. So I use my other hand, my left hand, to come in and push back. So one hand is pushing forward, one hand is pushing back. I call that my yin and yang hold. So as I cut down, not only am I pushing forward, but I'm pulling back so that the cut is limited. Like so. The other thing is, these bevels on these gouges, and you can see this is a, a fairly long bevel, they're often slightly curved. So they're not like a, a mortise chisel bevel or a bench chisel bevel that are flat and straight. These have a slight curve to them so that you can come into the work and immediately come out of the work. So often in carving, you're working in short areas and you want to be able to come in and come out. So the bevel is not necessarily uh, ground straight across. It's ground with a slight curve like this. On the other hand, the chisels are, in fact, ground straight across this way. They're not curved in this direction at all. They're straight across here, so they do have two sharp corners here. That's important. Um, but curved this way just slightly. The other thing is, I have this yin and yang hold like that, so I'm holding this. But when I start to wiggle, when I start to carve, I'm actually wiggling my chisel just a little bit. This helps me to advance the cut and keep a lot of control over what's going on. And then as I come out, I can wiggle right out and I get a nice, nice smooth cut that way, rather than just trying to push in and, uh, and push back out again. Now, you'll use both these cuts, this sort of cut and the wiggling cut, depending. If I'm using this V gouge to outline a profile and I want to make a, a complex curve and I'll have a line fault that I'm following here, I may wiggle this to help me go at various points along this curve. I'm going with the grain, across the grain, with the grain, across the grain. And so wiggling like this helps to make the cut 
uh, a little bit easier so I can get a complex shape without having tear out when I go uh, through a curve or something like that. So using the uh, tool back and forth like that um, will help to, um, wiggling like this will help to give you a, a good cut. Of course, the other way to use the chisel, the gouge, is to tap. And often, rather than holding the mallet down here low like that and striking like this, a very heavy operation, people often will hold it up here on the head and take light taps. This will allow you to steer the chisel and not be too aggressive on the advancement of the cut. So I hope that's uh, explained some of the some of the basics of selecting a, a chisel and the width and curve of the chisel and basics of doing elementary cuts. Thank you.